Hello and welcome back to another Space Engineers Showcase video. In today's video we're looking at another large mining vehicle and this one is called the TME 20,000 Goliath which is this lovely thing right here. So this is a very large land mining vehicle that's all been set up to easily control with your mouse. Pressing F10 and finding the Goliath in the spawn menu there it is. This thing is only 1,555 large blocks. It has no information whatsoever, so I'm very thankful that the cockpit has the controls written on it. So we'll give this a thumbs up. We'll move all the way around to the very front, and we'll have a quick look around the outside. So at the very front here, this is what we get. We have got a bunch of drills all connected onto each other, which inside this yellow block has got a rotor that will spin them around and around and around to make a massive hole through the mountainside. And a quick look inside here to show you the rotor. That's how it's all been set up and it comes across onto these dirty red conveyors with some lovely yellow blocks surrounding it. As we move further up the drill arm we've got two spies to light up the darkness and they continue along all the way over to here we've got some pistons and hinges. So this is how we're going to move the drilling arm up and down and that's how it's been set up. We can see some little bits of detail in here in the form of piston heads. They're just moving through the block. That's how it's been connected up onto another rotor. So this arm comes all the way down to our main body, which has got Goliath written on the side. In fact, we'll come to the opposite side where the sunlight is currently at. All the way around here. That's how it comes all the way down. As you can see, just above the arm, we do have two more spies angled on hinges that we can control. And if we were to come in between both our drilling arms, this is what we get. So we've got a lovely glass area where we can peer inside and control this arm. And just below it, we've got a bunch of catwalks to cover up the interior blocks that couldn't have a steel block placed in front of them. There we go. And if we were to continue around the side of the main body, this is what we get. We can see two doorways, top and bottom. The bottom one is how we're going to get in. And the top one is how we're going to view our progress without getting too far away from our driving seats. We can see Goliath written on the side with three lights to light it up at night. And just below that, putting my light on, we can see a bunch of large hydrogen tanks because we're primarily powered by hydrogen engines. If you were to move all the way around to the back of the main body, this is what we get. Not too much to talk about. We've got some blast or edge blocks and some more yellow steel blocks. Moving up and above here, we do have a small section for a small ship to land on and to pull out any resources we've collected or even just to transport your workers from the base over to this mining vehicle. Yes, there is a doorway to get inside. We'll come to that a bit later. Moving down and towards the wheel section, this is what we get at the very back here. We've got a bunch of space balls inside these little window blocks. Coming inside here, there is quite a lot of them. Then move across into the middle part where we've got a bunch of gyroscopes turned off. The reason why the gyroscopes are turned off is because we've got a unique control setting. Because the top vehicle is placed on a rotor, when we move our mouse around, we're just going to twiddle around the top section. So the bottom section will have no control. So what the creator has done is set up the gyroscopes to make it so you can turn left and right. So when you're ready to turn left, you can turn on these sections. When ready to turn right, you turn them off and turn on them. There's a bunch more gyroscopes in here and even more space walls at the very front there. If we were to come out and onto the side, we'll see a bunch of wheels all set up. We've got four large ones and a bunch of small ones. The smaller ones are to simply protect the middle section of the vehicle. So we are very, very heavy and going over a slight bump is going to cause the vehicle to tip over because we are rather front heavy. So that's just there for additional protection. And if we were to move all the way around to the very front of the bottom part, that is what we get. Moving down and underneath the only piece of detail that's worth mentioning is the connector and camera setup. I have no idea how you're going to get underneath this. There's very, very little clearance, but maybe if you made a microscopic vehicle, you can just scoot it under here and use the camera to get inside. And that is a extremely brief look around the outside of the TME 20,000 Goliath. Because now it's time to go inside and then we get to the fun section of actually trying it out. So grabbing hold of my character, what we're going to need to do is jetpack all the way up to this ladder and open the door. Coming inside, we're going to get a lovely hum of the hydrogen engines. And we do have a double door setup, 
so we can work on a non-auction planet. As we walk around here, we do have some stairs that we can just about get up if we're on a level surface. And on the interior, this is what we get. One hell of a lot of hydrogen engines to power this thing. And as we move all the way around to the very side here, looking in the middle, got an air vent. And on the opposite side, even more hydrogen engines. If we were to walk all the way over here and climb up the ladder, let's get a little jump going on there. There we go. All the way up to here, this is our control section. We've got a seat at the front to control the arms and the vehicle. And looking behind us, we've got a few little things. So we've got two programmable blocks that currently have nothing on it. And we do have an additional seat here, which currently has nothing on it. And turning around, we've got a bunch of time blocks. For that is how the arm is going to move up and down when we press the button. Moving forward just a little bit, we do have some air vents that go down to the lower section. So we do have that air vent to pump this area full of oxygen. And then looking to my right and the left, we've got these red doors. They'll lead to the little walkways on the side. So there we go. We can't go anywhere on here. We can simply hear what is going on with our drill and what is going on with the docking pad behind us. So there we go. We'll just come back through here. Double door once again to the opposite side. It's going to be the exact same setup. So there we go. Turning around and coming through the yellow door. This is our landing pad for our transport ship to come and dock on. We do have a little section here so we're nice and protected from the rain by any kind of nasty weather effects. And this is simply the docking area with a lone connector in the middle. So without further ado, I think it's time to actually get into the control seat and we'll play around with the drill. So coming into here, this is what we get in first person view. We've got a fantastic view at all of our drills as they will start to spin around and as we raise and lower the arm. Looking down, we've got our controls set up on the flight seat, which makes up for the lack of information on the store page. So number one and number two, this is what I was talking about with the gyroscopes. So coming into third person view, like so, what we're going to do is undo the parking brake. We will wobble around quite a lot and I will just straighten out the vehicle by turning my mouse. So yes, that is what I meant by the gyroscopes earlier. Using my mouse left and right, we're simply going to turn the top section. So when it comes to turning the vehicle, we're going to need to start moving forwards and use one of these gyroscopes on number one and number two, where we'll start to very slowly turn the vehicle all the way around like so. And that's how we're going to control it. But turning that off because I did kind of get myself in a bit of a pickle in here while using the voxel hands. So we don't have too much room to turn around. But you get the idea of what those controls are for. The rest of these controls are going to be for our arms. But we will come to number 8 and number 9 first of all. And this is going to be for our spotlights on the side of the main body. Number 9 is simply going to be to unlock it. And number 8 is to change the direction. So there we go with that. Yes, for 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, and 8. This is going to be for our drilling arm. So bring the free camera all the way across so we can get a good view of this. So number 4 and number 6 is to unlock our arm and be able to change its direction. So pressing number 4, we will start to move down. And then pressing number 3, we can change the direction of where that arm is going. There we go, like that. It will take its time to let raise and lower. And you might notice the vehicle is wobbling all around. There's not too much you can do about that. We'll simply lock that in place and we'll now press number six and this will unlock the other arm which we can then raise and lower at a very slow rate. So locking that in place once again, number seven is going to be to control our drills. This is simply a one button press to start it spinning around and get the drills moving. Pressing number seven, there we go. So what we're going to do now is drive close to the edge of this area where it's nice and flat and we'll start drilling away. So coming into first person view and doing the parking brake, we're going to start to move forwards and this is going to be what we get. We want to come all the way over to this section so we're going to use our gyroscopes to move ourselves around. There we go, it's going to get very wonky. Just going to reverse up, it's very well controlling this thing, it's very very light is what I'm trying to say. Yes, we're going to turn the arm all around here, turn off our gyroscopes. Now we're going to move ourselves a little bit closer, like so, and we're going to rotate ourselves. That should do quite nicely like that. Turning the vehicle all the way around, and now we're going to straighten up the arm. So bring the free camera all the way over, that's now jammed inside. Vehicle, like so. Now we're going to undo the arm, and we're going to start raising it up. So what I'm going to attempt to do is now straighten out the arm. And when we lower it, we should be at the perfect distance to start the mining in a straight line. 
all the way up with that. If we come up to here, we can see how the pistons are starting to move around. And that's, that's sort of good enough. We'll press four right about now. And then we'll press number six, and we should start to lower the main arm, which will lower everything else down. I don't think we're clipping onto anything. No, we are not. So we should be good enough just to pull this all the way down to the ground. Once again, we'll come into here and we'll get a better view at the pistons moving. So there we are with that. Just coming around to the side section once again. We are almost there, almost ready to start drilling. We are getting very close to the wall. We might start scraping the drills against the wall, but that should do a like so. So locking that in place is now time to press number seven. And we're gonna start drilling. I don't think we're close enough to do it. Yes, we are. I'm gonna start drilling away at the ground here. I'm gonna undo the parking brake and start to move this vehicle forwards. We're gonna to need to turn this thing around like so very carefully. In fact, we're gonna to need to reverse this thing up and turn that off. Oop, we turned a bit much, but that should be good enough. It is very, very heavy vehicle at the front there. But yes, I will try my best to keep this thing steady. So now what we're gonna do, hide the HUDs, move this thing forwards, like so, nice and slow, all the way forwards. So we're going to continue pushing this forwards. I think we might be in a bit of a problem because it is a lump right there. Yes, there is. We're not going to be able to get up that. So I'm going to need to reposition the vehicle once again. Coming like that. All the way back. Now we're going to press number two to start rotating this. We're going to straighten ourselves up. That should do nicely. And now we can properly come and duel this. It is a lot of fun to control this thing. It's a massive vehicle and... Yes. It's just a very interesting design of how it's all been set up. So what we're going to do now is, because it's fairly self-explanatory what this vehicle does, is change the way the drills drill and make a nice big hole through this mountainside. But first of all, let's see what we've collected. So over here we can see we've got a bunch of stone all inside our drills, but we do not have any containers. So we are completely reliant on our drills to store all our resources that we collect, we will have to be careful about that, but they do store quite a lot. What I've done is change the controls of our drills so that I can right mouse button to make a nice big hole. And what we're going to do is keep edging forwards. There we go. Change our camera all the way around, and that's more like it. We are now making some big holes. Look at all those particle effects coming out of there as we just move forwards more, more, and more. So there we go with that. We are making a gigantic hole. Look all that smoke, that's just fantastic stuff. And we're just going to keep moving forwards and jamming this drill through the mountainside. Yes, that is pretty much it for what the TME 20,000 Goliath has to offer. It's a fantastic designed vehicle and I absolutely love the drilling arm and house all being set up. It is a very wonky vehicle and it gets even more wonkier if you were to raise the wheels off the ground like so, so you can access the connector underneath. So you may want to have it all on the ground so the base is touching, make it nice and steady. So there we go. But yes, there'll be a link to it in the description below if you do wish to download it and play around with it yourself. I highly recommend you do, and I'll be back with another video somewhere soon. Bye bye.